Welcome to a very special episode of Why It Matters. I've been invited to talk about an impending threat, a technology that is driven by AI, which has been affecting mostly famous faces. This technology is called deep fake. Via digital manipulation of video, it can make someone do or say something they didn't in real life. For example, this is a deep fake. Now, it might seem like a bit of entertaining video wizardry can't do any harm. A lot of people would probably believe it, and that's the scary part. Selfie! If this technology would be run on me, I would feel very violated. On the morning of polling day, for example, a deepfake video emerges. That could be enough to alter people's beliefs. How worried do we need to be about deepfakes? This is our world today. Complicated ideas. New saturation. Information overload. We'll delve into the issues, break down the stories to see what matters and why it matters. Creating a lifelike impression of someone. It's been done before. But typically, it involves lots of money and manpower. A lifelike wax recreation of me would take about 350 hours of labour by a team of highly trained artists and a whopping 300,000 US dollars to make. I could also be modelled with animation. That would still require a team of skilled animators and a very Hollywood budget. How do I create a digital video of myself using computer graphics? Well, I would need images of myself from all angles. Are you all done yet? These can then be stringed together to form a video of my face. Hello? Now, each of these talented art students will take up to three hours to do one portrait. What if you could automate all of that tedious human effort? Using artificial intelligence to replace human labour in the synthesis of the human image is known as deep fake. Simply put, deep fakes are created using sophisticated artificial intelligence. It refers to manipulated videos where we replace an existing image with someone else's likeness. I'm a TV presenter. So, for example, there's so much material of me publicly available online. And then there are the free-to-download apps like FaceApp. These apps use AI to draw from all my video data and generate my face from every angle. It can then superimpose my likeness on some existing video. And because the technology is becoming so accessible, it has been taken out of the hands of computer scientists to content creators. Arnold Robin is the director of innovation at We Are Social. He's interested in virtual reality, augmented reality, and now deep fake. What exciting things can we use this technology for? So we've seen several examples in the advertising industry, mainly to create awareness for non-profit companies. We have this example of uh, David Beckham trying to raise awareness uh, for malaria. Malaria isn't just any disease. It's the deadliest disease there's ever been. Se dice que ha matado más de la mitad de la población que ha existido. You hear him speaking in other languages and in different voices, but his lips look as if they are the ones mm. producing the exactly. sounds. Those exactly. Words. This is one of the use of deep face. So, uh, for this one, they, they just use the lower part of the, of the face, but mm -hmm. we have uh, other examples where they can use the whole face. Okay. Uh, so, for example, the Dali Museum in the US. Salvador Felipe Jacinto Dali y Domenech. And I am back. So they recreated Dali, Dali. from the, all the footages, all the images that we have of him. So basically they got an actor to speak like that in yeah. an accent in Dali's mm. voice, yeah. but they used deepfake to put Dali's 
face. Exactly. Okay, so that sounds like exciting stuff for deepfakes, but I don't seem to get the sense that it's very widespread at the moment. Uh, a recent study just shown that um, the number of um, deepfake content has doubled in the past year, mm -hmm. past 10 months, I think, and mm -hmm. uh, actually 96% of the content uh, using deepfake are actually pornographic content. Which is Wait, 96 96%. Percent. Yeah. 96%? That's a lot, yeah. So, it's, so they use the face of uh, celebrities to paste on a video of uh, like porn videos. The earliest application of deepfake technology only allowed for a simple face swap. Anonymous developers are swiftly coming up with new apps. For example, Deep Nude, which can remove clothes from women in photos, making them appear naked. And it costs all of 50 US dollars to buy. While it showed inconsistent results, mostly failing on poorly lit or low resolution photographs, it can be scarily convincing if you feed it the right photographs. It can make someone do or say something they didn't in real life. For example, this is a deep fake. The ability to doctor an image or a video, for example, to replace a face with another, is not new. But what used to take hours can now be done within minutes, thank face from every angle. It can then superimpose my likeness on some existing video. Selfie. This means some of the people who are most vulnerable to deep fake manipulation now are people who post plenty of high quality images of themselves online. People like 22-year-old phone with 6,000 followers and over 500 photos of himself online. And 18-year-old Naomi with 9,000 followers and about 400 photos of herself online. Um, oh, I see your travel pictures now. Yeah. <laughs> I think I can understand why there's more male followers because you're at the beach and you're in beach mm. where I can totally understand why now. Sorry, parents. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to phone's Instagram account. Straight off already, I see like the brightest photo I see there is a topless photo of you. Oh no, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't be! I mean, I'm super envious of them, so yeah. What Naomi and Phone don't realise is that these high-resolution, attractive photos of themselves work best for an app like Deep Nude. There is advanced technology readily available now. It's called Deepfake. So deepfake basically means the ability to use your image and manipulate it in such a way to make it seem like it is you or your image doing or saying things. Saying things? Yeah. Wait, what? You mean saying? Yeah. Imagine a video of you saying and doing something that that is not you. Honestly, I don't know about it until now. Yeah. Like, I really, that gives me goosebumps. Oh That's how scary that is because people will never know if it's you anymore. Well, what if I told you that there is this app called, so like deep fake, right? There's an app called Deep Nude. Deep. Oh. Yeah, can you imagine what it does? I think he's already half nude right <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So you just have to do the other half, is it? It won't be that hard. I'm, it's half, I'm covered. It's half the effort. <laughs> Um, that's scary. Like, that's something my parents always told me not to do. <laughs> and if it were to, like, yeah. be shown all over media, I think that can destroy people's lives. Yeah, it mm -hmm. can really destroy your future, everything that you have built from scratch. So I think yeah. it's very dangerous. So have people been using this? It's been, it's definitely been used before, okay? Um, but, okay, it's not good news for you, um, but perhaps, Perhaps good news for phone. Um, this app currently works only for women. Oh, okay, I'm safe. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so Naomi, like, if that ever happened to you, what's gonna happen? A lot of people that wouldn't know me would probably believe it, and that's the scary part. If this technology would be run on me, I would feel very violated. What would you say to the people who tell, let's just say they, well, you know, you put your face out there, 
you are exposing yourself to such risks, so you should be responsible for it. What would you say? That sounds like my dad. <laughs> <laughs> what would you tell your dad? Um, <laughs> actually, I feel like nowadays, nearly every single human has pictures of themselves somewhere out there in social media. Mm -hmm. It could be Facebook, it could be LinkedIn, yeah. it could be any professional platform as well. So technically, this could be used in any aspect. So if you put yourself out there, even on a professional level, it could still be misused. Yeah. So that's what I would tell them. I'd be like, you watch out about your face. <laughs> so <laughs> you what? never know what body you're going to have tomorrow. <laughs> Deep Nude was taken down only three days after it went online. But you know how when things go on the internet, they stay on the internet? Today, Deep Nude still exists and is even better than before, improved by an anonymous team of coders. Luckily, the next big fake is already in the crosshairs of a task force. Hi, uh, Nicholas? Derek? Hi. Hi, Hi. Joshua. Nice to meet you. Black Dot Research was set up in 2018 to fact-check all the outrageous stories we pass around without a thought on social media these days. Um, no, no offence, I thought it would be a bit more high-tech, you know, like deep fake, high-tech stuff, so... Well, I think uh, one thing to note about fact-checking is that it's not necessarily just about any kind of special or secret or mysterious technology. Uh, it's really about equipping uh, as many people as possible with the skill sets to be able to identify and recognise fake news or potential fake news. All right. Okay, so can you walk me through the process of how you find out if this video is a deep fake or not? Absolutely. Imagine this for a second. One man with total control of billions of people's stolen data all their secrets, their lives, their futures. I owe it all to Spectre. Spectre showed me that whoever controls the data controls the future. So that's the video. Um, what do we do first? The first thing we do is we search for surrounding media on that video itself to identify what actually has been said about it. So if I were to open up um, just any Google screen itself and just search for keywords in that video, for example, a key line in that video was whoever controls the data controls the future. Mm -hmm. controls. You might come across news articles pointing out that that public figure did not say those words that were um, in the video itself. And that itself should give rise to a suspicion that what you watched was a deep fake video. I can see that all the major news outlets, they've reported that this is a fake video. But what if a video is so recent and these news outlets have not published anything about it. What we would then do is we cut a screenshot, really, mm -hmm. and I will upload a screenshot that I've taken, and we see if we can reverse image search that video to trace a source video. You can see that actually the video, while this deepfake video was released in June 2019, the original video itself came from somewhere in September 22nd, 2017. And you can see that um, all the elements in the corners, the main subject itself is very closely similar. Mm -hmm. Then you know that there was manipulation of the original video that led to the deepfake video. Mm -hmm. So that itself is something that's publicly available. Our mm -hmm. readers can, can look at all the evidence and actually replicate the entire search process themselves mm -hmm. and come to the conclusion that, yes, this is a deepfake video. I'm pretty convinced by that, um, to debunk that video. Um, but what if deepfakes you know, advance so much so that even technology is unable to detect um, that it is a deepfake. It's not hard to dispute and debunk. If it's about an actual person, Mark Zuckerberg, for example, it's very easy for him to come out and say, hey guys, I didn't actually say that. But what if you don't have enough time? What if it's really a split second just to get people to believe something? On the morning of polling day, for example, a deepfake video emerges where one of the critical uh, personalities from one of the sites comes out and says something. And people ha have a couple of minutes to, to process this before they go and vote, for example. Mm. That could be enough to, to tip yeah. you know, certain people's opinions over. I think nothing can really beat a, a public having a good, strong gut instinct to question, you know, this may not be real. Let's just do a few steps to just check on it. Mm -hmm. you know, nothing can really beat that. Technology can't replace that, really. Okay. So it's not about waiting for a magic bullet to take care of deep fakes. We need to be savvy. And how far along are we? Let's take a look at this video. Dear people of Belgium, this is a huge deal. As you know, 
I had the balls to withdraw from the Paris Climate Agreement, and so should you, because what you guys are doing right now in Belgium is actually worse. So it looks like and sounds like Donald Trump, but for the discerning, you might be able to tell that it's not really actually his voice. Only blah, 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 bing, bang, boom. You even pollute more than before the agreement. Shame, total shame. And if that escapes you, look at his mouth. At least I'm a fair person. Something seems off. His lips look cartoonish. And his eyes, they're quite lifeless and stiff. We all know that climate change is fake, just like this video. So obviously, this video was meant to be a parody. Obviously, fake. And yet, the first few days this video went online, it provoked hundreds of comments by angry Belgians directing their fury at Trump. They thought it was real. I was expecting all of us to do better. Just why do people still get fooled by a deepfake video, even when it is clearly identified as a fake? One man with total control of billions of people's stolen data, all their secrets, their lives, their futures. Today, technology is capable of making deepfake videos that are very convincing. But I've also found that they are not difficult to debunk. You have professional fact-checkers and newsmakers themselves who would usually decry the videos as fakes in almost real time. Still, that doesn't stop many people from falling for them. Why is that? I seek out fake news expert Dr. Lim San San to find out what drives this behaviour. She's asked to meet me at the former Ford factory. Joshua, how convincing do you find these magazine photographs? Pretty convincing, actually. I see photos about healthcare workers giving out rations, helping the sick uh, in the nursery. What if I told you that these were photographs taken and published during the Japanese occupation by the Japanese occupation government in Singapore? Aha, uh -huh. okay, then that's uh, kind of different now because mm -hmm. it would seem to me like then it's propaganda. Indeed, it's a form of um, propaganda in the sense that the Japanese occupation government was trying to convey the impression uh -huh. that they were doing a very good job of running Singapore. I so see. these examples of um, state-sponsored misinformation to advance a particular position mm -hmm. are not new. Aha! Uh -huh. Fake news, right in front of me, decades ago. That's right, it's an age-old problem. What is it about us that we still fall into the trap of fake news and still believe it? Like even though th there was a, a video about Donald Trump, um, dissing the Belgians and, and people actually believed it? So when people see, for example, views that um, are consistent with their pre-existing beliefs about a particular individual or about a particular issue, they tend to fall for what is called confirmation bias. And so they become more predisposed to believing news even if it is uh, false. Right, I mean, and the video was obviously so fake. Yes, so it's very successful social engineering because the video clearly taps into the belief that people have about Donald Trump being a climate change denier and mm -hmm. it confirms their uh, existing beliefs. So even though the video is fake, it is consistent with the image of Donald Trump having said that climate change is a hoax. So I can hardly blame the news publishers when they sound the alarm. But what if warning everyone about this technology only makes it easier to spread lies. I'm 26 this year. My age is 11 years old. 27 years old. 56 years old. I'm 24 years old. I've gathered a group of Singaporeans of all ages for a simple test. All done, folks. I took care of it. They have to watch some viral videos I found on the internet and tell me if they believe it to be real or not. Um, I think it's real. This picture is fake. It could be edited. Yep. Uh, real. It's real. I think I've seen this place before. It's in Bolivia.
That has got to be for a movie. I think it's, it's real. I think that this video is fake. Uh, I don't think this video is real. It seems quite absurd. Yeah. <laughs> It doesn't look manipulated. I don't think this video is real. I think the robot is is fake. The stunts are too complicated. Two out of the three videos I showed them are real. Their authenticity wouldn't have been called into question a few years ago. But technologies such as deepfake have made people more skeptical. Because it's now harder than before to discern what's real and what's fake. I feel troubled by that thought. So I seek out Benjamin Ang, an expert in national security, to find out what the implications might be. The danger would be that people begin to mistrust everything that they see and they believe nothing, and then they become distrusting of everyone and everything. Basically, then you just can't have a society that works together if you don't trust anybody. Mm -hmm. What is the worst case scenario that can happen to Singapore? So as part of our research in national security issues, we've seen that some countries have a tactic. If they want to disrupt a target, then they won't just put fakes on one side of the political story, they'll put it on the other side as well. Even better if it's a fake that somebody can spot, then the liberal people say, look, you conservative people put a fake there, message there, and the conservative people say, hey, you liberal people put a fake message there, mm -hmm. and then therefore you can't be trusted, and then therefore you can't be trusted, uh. and then everybody doesn't trust each other it anymore. It just creates even more distrust. Then in the worst case, anger could escalate into violence, which then creates even more distrust, and so it just feeds on itself. How do we recuperate from that? How do we get out of that rut? If we can have that communication with people with different views from us, then we can say, look, this is fake. Let's call it out together. As it is, we take whatever we receive and circulate on the internet with a pinch of salt. So deep fakes just feels like another reason to dismiss whatever we see online. But that's where the true danger lies, because in doing so, we might just accidentally dismiss the truth. And that's why it matters. <laughs>